Okay, let's go, let's go. Okay, I'm live. Okay, stream is healthy, sound check. Okay, everything looks good. Welcome to the Master Leong Show. <coughs> Hi, busy day for me. Just taken dinner right after I finish my dinner. Then I have to do this uh live stream already. Oh, <coughs> so a bit, of, <coughs> a bit of peppery smell in, in, in my mouth. So uh tonight the Alibaba pre market up two percent. Oh last night was down two percent. Today up back already. Was last night the export numbers, the import numbers was very bad. Then there was also the fear of deflation. So last night I shared with you all my expectation was that uh the CPI <coughs> definitely will come in uh negative uh, because everyone expect uh, uh China to go into deflation, but how bad it is, how bad it is so you see all the news outlet all shout oh deflation 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 a lot of fear la. there's a lot of fear in the china market of course this is uncommon the whole world is in high inflation yet china is going into deflation so this is a scary word that that scare a lot of investors so let me say hi to you all lazy investor what numbers the, the cpi numbers yeah yeah so uh happy 58th birthday singapore happy national day to all of you all those that are in uh, singapore Oh, good evening, Wallace. What la? I read on division. I want to go uh, there for holiday. Oh, because it's cheap. Ah. So, so I'll talk more about China. Now, now China is very accessible. Towards the end, I'll talk about going to China for holiday and the payment, all this. Yeah, today marching solid. Yes, Baba recovery mode. And I think tomorrow the, the results will be good. So today, the first part, I'll talk about the CPI numbers. Then the second part, I'll give you the estimates. What are, what are the market expectations? What's the Alibaba Tencent results ahead that we, we will see? What is the, the what's the indication? Yeah. So uh, I think later tonight can see the fireworks. I think it's like 8.15 or what? Yeah, but I'm doing this live stream so I'll be missing out on the fireworks. You all can watch the fireworks live. Uh, I don't know. Or watch the replay. Good evening. I love my country. Sun Chai. Rocket. Uh. Or uh, Li Baba dropped 2% yesterday. Yeah, because the import-export numbers are uh, very bad. Yeah, SE never celebrate SG birthday. SE, I think, still in the cost cost saving mode. But SE, the book come back already. Uh, $57, $58. Uh, a, lot, a lot of you are waiting for $50. Yeah. Uh, uh girl, Daniel, been thinking if export import for GDP still 5%, how come? Or because uh, export import, it means uh, external consumption. That means, example, they import steel, they import oil, then they manufacture the goods, then they sell it to US and Europe. So by doing this kind of transaction, right, it increases their GDP because they do trade with external countries. But why the GDP growth is 5% while the export import drop? It's because that they are trading less with the, the Western countries. But on the flip side, they are consuming more. They depend on their own uh, internal circulation, local consumption. That means... They import, let's say, raw materials, then they build the EV car. Or let's say they from the African mine, they get the lithium, nickel, cobalt. Then they build the EV car. But who buy the Chinese EV car? The Chinese EV car, they cannot sell in the US because they are not qualified for the 7,500 uh, rebate. So the EV cars mostly is consumed domestically. Like Lin, Neo, x BYD, they, most of their sales is in China. And they are seeing rapid growth. That, that's why the GDP is growing at 5%. They produce and they own some consume and they're also doing a lot of infrastructure project but infrastructure project the more they do the less effective it is so they need to push for new areas uh, to grow like green energy ev ai basically the, the high tech high tech segment is where they want to grow the low-end manufacturing is dying uh. yesterday, yesterday i shared with you already if you are like low-end manufacturing like you're making like furniture making clothes you, you're gonna die uh, because it's difficult to export this kind of goods because you're competing against other countries that have cheap labor like Latin America, uh, like Africa, like Vietnam, like India. They have a uh, cheaper labor cost. So the downturn we're seeing is in the manufacturing and it is very severe for, for all this, the low-end manufacturing. They are lowering their prices aggressively. Huh? NDP much solid. Uh. Oh, okay. You're watching NDP, uh, National Day Parade. So half my viewers are from Singapore. I uh, hope you all enjoy your, your, your holiday. Uh, so tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, you can take MC or take leave. Then super long weekend already. Uh, yeah. 
open two window ah, wow, then power, wow, can multitask. Yeah, Ch uh, China EV is doing very well. Later I'll talk about Ferrari. Yeah, Ch Lim CH, China economy dividend state in July. Yeah, CPI minus 3%. Li Yong, welcome, welcome. Okay, let me begin. So, uh, the, the numbers came in. The CPI for China in the month of July fell by 0 0.3. This is negative inflation. So, it's called deflation. The prices of goods actually fall. Whereas in Singapore, the, our Thai perm is more expensive. Rental is more expensive. Electricity is more expensive. In the US, same thing. Rental uh, is getting more expensive. The cost of living is more expensive. China is the reverse. But why Alibaba is rallying 2% tonight? It's because the drop is better than what analysts estimate. A analysts was very gloomy. They expected a 0.4% decline in prices. That means a deep uh, deflation. Yesterday, I shared that I was expecting like 0 0.2 ahead. But I'm, I'm, I'm usually more optimistic like, when it comes to China. But I'm wrong. And how is 0 0.3. But, but that's good like, because it's better than estimates. Then production prices uh, fell for 10 consecutive months. So this is very bad. So this is mostly uh, hurting the manufacturers. So uh, po 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 uh, po po production prices uh, is, is like what, what is your cost to manufacture and what price you are, you are selling out. That means right out of the factory, right out of the factory. That means, example, like I mentioned, that like furniture and clothes, the prices to when you come out and you sell is lower and lower and lower because consumers won't buy unless you can make a lower price. You want to export to other countries, you're competing against. Let's say you want to export a T-shirt, lah, or like my T-shirt is for Uniqlo. Uniqlo is not made in China; it's made in Vietnam. Or and I buy it, it's very cheap, like eight dollars only. So you're competing against Uniqlo or this ma, then they are buying from Vietnam, whereas very cheap labor. So in order for Chinese factories to compete, they can only lower prices, especially in, in the low end manufacturing. So it is a down downward spiral all, all the way. But the good sign is last month, which is uh, June, the decline was actually about five point one percent. So we, we see a bounce here. But I don't know if it's a fixed sign or not. But hopefully it, it, it is a bottoming off. Uh. It cannot be down, 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 down all the way forever. So hopefully the PPI, the production price index, is showing signs of bottoming. Oh, but the most important, right, because we as an investor, as long as we are not in manufacturing, we don't care about PPI. We care about the whole China economy as a whole, which is the CPI. Consumers are not willing to spend. That's why the CPI is down. But CPI is a domestic figure. It's China itself. Oh, yesterday, the export import is... You selling to US and Europe. US and Europe, likely they will only gradually buy less and less from China due to the decoupling. So China needs to sell to the rest of the world. And China needs to consume a lot of their goods themselves. So it will slowly, slowly shift the gear. But now the problem is uh, they keep pushing for internal circulation. But the consumers, they are very cautious with their spending. Though they, they don't spend unless uh, you give them a discount. Yes, the EV companies, their sales are up 35%. But they are all losing money. They are selling at a loss. Only Tesla and BYD is, is making profit selling EV. So yes, they are buying, but they only buy at, at a discount. And that's why it's deflation. The price keep going down. So the high base of comparison with last year, saying the contraction likely to be temporary and consumer demand continue to improve in July. So this is the government uh, department. Uh. Then the government official, the chief statistician also said that uh, CPI to likely rebound gradually. So the PBOC is the Public Bank of China, basically the central bank said that China will avoid deflation. So although all the Western media all shout deflation, deflation, China very bad, Mr. Lu also said, but China very bad, China very bad. Oh. But the officials, they are confident uh, that the second half, they will avoid deflation. It will go back to inflation and their full year inflation likely to trend closer towards 1%. Yeah, so hopefully uh, we do, we, what, one by one, by one month we see that. But for the month of August, uh, it could be still negative. Then before the September, the last four months, then we go back uh, into inflation mode. So we see how it goes month by month. So while uh, prices of serve, so uh, I mentioned that uh, some items are actually doing well. Some sectors are doing well. So you see that prices of service spending is actually going up. Rec uh, recreation means like 
uh, for entertainment, like you buy game or you go like sightseeing or you go amusement park, that's recreation. That's going up. Education also going up. So it's, it's not true that every every sector, every industry is bad. So that like you see Western media, right? They paint a picture that China is going to collapse. Uh, Mr. Lu say everything is bad. Businesses going bad. Serious, serious, serious problem. So it depends on what industry you are. I like keep uh, emphasizing manufacturing, property, please avoid. It's really still very bad. These two sectors is very bad. And they make up a big portion of the GDP, no, no doubt. So manufacturing past the uh, property, maybe that's that 40-45% of the GDP already. But the other half, let's say half is not good, but the other half is doing well. Or like retail spending is doing well. Entertainment is doing well. People are traveling for holiday. Restaurants are, are booming. Then uh, tuition, let's say one-to-one -one tuition. Then the education software, education hardware is also doing well. First, they brand, brand the private tuition already. Right? They cannot do private. So, so people, the parents, they rely on uh, buying like a, a smartphone for the kid uh, to do uh, the additional uh, tuition, but which is the AI or, or the software uh, teaching them. So for, uh, for the experts, uh, also called experts, uh, the, the Ting Suang, uh, Chief Economist, of standard charter we expect cpi to be negative only for short term like one or two months so we take it negative like we take it at august also negative so only september then we will see the recovery so maybe september positive inflation then the market can rebound for that so short term have to endure food and energy prices are likely to go up instead of going down in the second half so this i would agree that first look at the oil prices the first half it was like trading at 65 70 dollars now oil prices is uh 80 dollars so globally inflation can only go up be it us europe or china the higher oil prices affect everything be it like manufacturing or running your your ice car or and so it affects all the goods basically then food prices is going up like in asia right uh thai the thai rice uh, the prices up five percent in a single day so if you haven't buy rice, I uh, better go and buy rice. Uh. I think there is going to be a rice crisis uh, because the weather is very bad. Like you see like China had the flooding all this, then the, the typhoon is hitting other parts of Asia. So natural disaster. Uh, and sometimes the our weather is very weird. It's uh, extremely hot or extremely cold. So that affects the food supply. Less supply means higher prices. So I think probably tomorrow I'm going to buy one more bag of rice. Uh, I uh, buy maybe two or three uh, bag of the 5 kg Thai rice and keep keep in my storeroom. Uh, that hot, uh, hotter, uh, hot some rice. Uh. <laughs> What's, the prices of rice will only be going up. Because this is my prediction. Confirm uh, the price of rice will only go up. But uh, I don't know how to invest. Uh, I, don't, I don't trade in the commodity market. So deflation, is that something to be very worried about? So in the, even the US, they also face deflation uh, uh, over the past century. Uh, U.S. has been uh, the world leader uh, for the past 80 years or so. In their early days, we also saw uh, very deep deflation, uh, deflationary. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five times they, they hit uh, uh, de deflation. So it's nothing uncommon for a very big nation, a very big economy to face deflation. But usually it's uh, temporary. Uh, if, you, if, if you're going to plot the Japan one, right, that, that their deflation can be like, 10, 20 years one or well, first uh, Japan is, is more of a, a rare rare case uh, because during the Asia financial crisis their bubble was very 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 big like uh, Japan which was the second largest economy yet they, their stock market is about I think like 60 70 percent the market world market cap uh, for their stock market uh, yeah that's why the Japanese they can buy the entire US you know you sell all the Japanese asset you can buy all the US assets so that doesn't make sense. Uh. The, 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 the Japan, the property and the stock market was damn crazy. The PE uh, is not 100 times, uh, can, can go into 1,000. Uh. They, they, they got blue chip that trade at 1,000 times earnings. Uh. That's why when it exploded, uh, the deflation was for 10, 20 years. That, then now finally the J Japan is recovering from that. But I don't know if it's a real recovery or not. So same thing for China. This is a not, time, not the first time they had the deflation already. Or like the global financial crisis, they also had the deflation. 2015, uh, the stock market bubble popped already. Then short term, uh, this 2018 uh, is more of the commodity prices. Like I mentioned the, 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 the pop prices crash uh, due to uh, oversupply. 
So they have faced uh, four, four times, uh, four, four major episodes of deflation. This is their fifth one. Usually it's short lived, uh, like maybe a few months, or at worst, maybe just like, uh, worst case is one year. Uh, or it could be like one or two months, it could be one year. I don't know how severe it is, but it, it likely I think this one should be a mild one. So this is only the fourth time this century China has reported deflation by that measure. So usually when deflation, right, Beijing will respond with forceful monetary easing and large physical stimulus. Especially the one that we saw here, that is very, very long and, and deep one. Then they have to do a lot of quantitative easing. So like, like Japan, they have uh, deflation for 10, 20 years. That's why they QE all the way, zero interest rate for, for a few decades really. They have to do QE for a few decades, then they get out of it. Also, Beijing has vowed to accelerate infrastructure investment. Uh, that's why GDP uh, is, is still growing at 5%. But they will increase their support for the housing market. Because housing market is one quarter of the GDP. But they don't expect a large scale stimulus. Because the large scale stimulus, right? First thing is that this deflation is not as severe as what we saw in 09 or, or 15 or during the COVID period. Uh. It's not, say, very severe. It's just a mild deflation only. So they don't want to like flood the market with, with so much money because some of their local government, they have a lot of debt and they don't want to create a bubble also. So they are being cautious. And also, when you do a, a say, a countrywide stimulus, right, you are helping the weak industries also. So weak industries, you should let them fail. For example, low-end manufacturing, a lot of them will actually go bankrupt. Because China has become too prosperous already. They, they should not be doing low-end manufacturing. They should focus on mid-end and especially high-end manufacturing. Because they're going to be the next stage. They want to replace US as the world leader. So they have to be the technology lever, leader. So they focus their stimulus, right? It's like on EV, AI, those and green energy, and especially semiconductor. So these are the high technologies that is still growing, is still showing positive growth and this carrying the GDP and they want to keep stimulating. Whereas low end manufacturing, they don't want to stimulate it. They want it to fail. They want it to fail. Because gone are the days that they do low end manufacturing already. They, in fact, they will outsource it to like Vietnam or Africa, which they are investing heavily. Lah. These Chinese companies, they are investing a lot uh, in Africa also. Yeah, so uh, a lot of people say, oh, the China very, very bad, very bad. The numbers very bad. But on, on the flip side, the data I see is also showing another story. Uh, like EV sales, you know, is very good. LVMH, uh, Nike, Apple sales uh, in China, all positive growth. Apple sales up 8%. LVMH, China sales up 15%. Ni uh, Nike, China sales up 8%. Then Ferrari, uh, that's today only. This, this, this Ferrari hits China milestone with one quarter of sales to women. So this is quite surprising. I, I didn't know women like to drive Ferrari. Usually it's, it's a male driver. Because, uh, Ferrari is very popular in, in, in China because it's red color. For Chinese, right, red means hua, la, or red, red means it's uh, prosperous and, and lucky. And red is also the color for, for the Chinese woman. They, they love red, red lipstick, uh, red dress, a uh, red car. So one quarter of their sales go to women. And you see that uh, for their sales, uh, albeit like China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, it's still going rapidly. Also, uh, it is the, the, it's surprising me that actually luxury sales in China is still doing well. But those luxury companies like, uh, like I mentioned the iPhone, they, they, although they sell well in China, they give the discount. That's, that's why the sales is well. So China is still can sell, still got some consumption. But they will only buy, the China consumers, they are very sa savvy. They will only buy if you give them a uh, discount. So so my, my second part is to talk about the Chinese tech. Uh, what is the results ahead? So I watched the Chief Papa channel. That, that he had this video yesterday. Uh, so he shared this video. is actually his the GMT, which is actually a paid membership uh, sharing that he did, uh, I think, in the first quarter of this year, early this year. Uh, I think it was in... Uh, or the second quarter, I think it was May or, or June. He mentioned in his video that this was his like, May or June live stream, which he covered the first quarter results of all these Chinese tech companies. And these are the ones that he feels are, are the better ones, are like JD, Baba, Futu, Meituan, Baidu, and Pinduoduo. Then he got compare these six companies, which one is he feels is a better deal or what. 
My view is that all these six companies always can buy one. If you buy it as a basket as a whole, you will make money. But all the risk and reward is different. Like Futu, I did a deep dive on it before. It's high risk uh, because uh, for their customers, they serve the mainland customers and give them access to the US market. But that's a gray area. They might face a, a crackdown or clampdown by the authorities, but it's high risk, high returns. Then for Meituan, Ting Toto is the high growth tech. Yeah, they are going very fast, but the risk is higher. Then like uh, JD, Baba, and Baidu, it's more matured, but it's a solid value pick. They have a lot of cash in, in their balance sheet. But I'm surprised he, he never covered Tencent. Yeah, so in my second half sharing, I'll give you all the earnings guidance for all these uh, big tech companies. Like what's the revenue growth, earnings growth that is expected for their second quarter uh, results. Okay, let me read through some comments. Uh, before I continue, uh, okay, alright. So David Wong, rocket lah. Oh, okay, David Wong. This give me confidence. Baba will beat earnings estimate. I think can lah. I think can be a. Most manufacturing is middle to low end in China. High end only a sector view. Yeah. So high end now they are placing their bet. They are betting very heavily on high end manufacturing, especially semiconductor, EV, green energy. All this they bet very big billions and billions of dollars yeah so so hopefully they can succeed lah. so far like i see like the the ev and the semiconductor their revenues growth easily like 20 to 50 percent one yeah they, they, these two industries they are growing very rapidly yeah because the chinese companies they are, they are not buying the chips from the u.s makers they are buying from their own local chinese makers so like smic lah, all this uh, that their sales definitely will do very well. Minchin SE, short put at 65 is deep in the money. Oh, you sell put lah, you sell put that then, oh, like that you get the free premium ah. Okay, congrats, congrats. Yeah, then you don't mind picking it up if it, if it comes to 65. Also can sell put or if you think it, it's not gonna rally, then you just sell put, uh, collect the premium. Ah. But I don't play option lah. SE lower price is $40, but I don't think it's coming to 40 lah. 40 was during the, the, the last year. The, the all the high growth tech all explode yeah i think 50 will be very very low already even now it's very cheap already but just wait for the results or actually now there's no rush to buy se la. just wait for the se results then you decide again if se fall to 40 dollar i sell organ go all in la. wow so fierce la. se no 50 dollar no buy seems a lot of you all like the se but you're all waiting to buy it cheap cheap la. yeah anata welcome welcome chun chai Waiting for Palantir to drop to $14. I don't like Palantir. Eh. Palantir, the growth seems slow, eh, 13%. I think for the high growth tech, there, there are other better better picks. Eh. You buy Palantir, 13% growth, you might as well buy Meta or Amazon. Got 11% growth. Quite, quite similar. If you buy it, you post, like for me, you invest in technology companies, there's two groups. Either you go for uh, big tech, which is the like your FANG stocks, uh, or Alibaba, Tencent, buy two. Or you go for high growth. High growth is like Meituan, Pinduoduo, SE, all this. Like you see Meituan, Pinduoduo is like 25, 50% kind of growth. Then, then, man, man, then Palantir, 13%, 17% growth is neither here nor there. It's not a big, big blue chip tech. It's also not a high growth tech. So I don't know what Palantir is. Empty piles, welcome, welcome. China should give consumer voucher. I think they, they're going to do that. So if you, they buy a high end electronics, like you buy fridge, uh, you buy smart TV, la, then they give you the rebate. I think they're going to do that for the second half. Yesterday, US index down 1% as smoothly downgrade. Yeah, the 10 regional banks uh, got, got downgrade. How can stock the Ali, Lili, right? No, Novo, those, they up a lot. Eh. Now the Ali, Lili, right, is like the top 10 market cap. Eh. I'm surprised eh, that the healthcare stock up so much, but I'm not an expert. It's not, healthcare is not within my circle of competence. Uh, so, so I don't touch eh. There is only this much that Chinese can self consume. Yeah, because uh, that by right, right, that consumption should keep increasing as the economy prospers. But now is uh, the consumers, they don't want to consume so much. They consume selectively. They want good stuff, but they will only buy if it's a discount. So it's the psychologic, psych psychological part. The, the banks actually flooded with cash. Companies flooded with cash. You look at all the Chinese big tech companies, they have so much cash in their balance sheet. Now it's too much cash and the sentiment's not there uh, to, to rally. 
what is China waiting for? Waiting for people to protest again. I think now, now no more protest really. Lah. After the reopening, people all go and travel and enjoy their life. Just that people are not confident no, of the future. They worry of the uh, global slowdown. Waiting for year of dragon. Where's the year of dragon? Usually you are year of dragon, a uh, very hot one. A lot of dragon baby. Chinese like to give birth in the year of dragon. But dragon children usually is more smart, more, more, more wealthy. Be patient. China don't want to rush. End up later like US high inflation. Yeah, they don't want to create a bubble. Low prices for longer is good. Don't keep wishing for prices to moon. Later regret cause nothing left to buy. Yeah, so now is the opportunity to buy cheap cheap. Lim C H once a uh, China largest developer country, uh, garden in crisis unable to pay bond. Yeah, now they they are still in default on their bond. So for their bond right, they have a thirty day grace period. So they can delay paying by 30 days. End of 30 days, they don't pay, then it's a default. Uh, until now, Country Garden haven't default. So analyst expectation is that they won't default. Uh. They're just using this 30 day rule uh, to uh, better manage their cash flow. I believe they will pay one. Uh. But the, the bond market, right, it has crashed from 90 cents to 10 cents. Uh. So the bond market price it as a default already. Country Garden is quite a big property player. Uh. So, but it's smaller than Evergrande. Ah. So if there is a chance that it might explode ah, because we are outsider, we don't know what is their balance sheet, whether we really, really got cash to pay or not. But if country garden explode, right, then the, the market will, will, will drop further. Lor. Plus, yeah, but I don't expect any explosion, ah, but, but it might. Ah. Rice prices soaring to higher since 208. Yeah, time to stock up rice. Ah. Stock up a few bags of rice. Ah. Rice can keep for a uh, for one or two years, one go bad one. So you can just buy one or two bags of rice, put in your kitchen or, or your, your cabinet. Yeah, Japan very short. Yeah, can go holiday. One SGD is one, 100 yen. You eat one ramen is like 1,000 yen. Japan, the prices never go up one. Always cheap one. Lazy investor, I went to one tourism beach spot in Hainan restaurant. Same pricing as our Heartland coffee shop. Buy food, no need to think. Wow, I good. Yeah, Alex, welcome, welcome. Why? First time, ah, testing, ah, uh, very good. Team, you what? Crude oil, 84. Oil prices will, will push inflation e even higher. Lazy investor, JB, uh, more and more prices increase. JB, the one time in Chow Dollar. Kenny Zhong, welcome, welcome. Oh, Kenny Zhong, I remember you. Last time, uh, Niam Poly, right? I think we all, if I, if I ne never remember wrongly. Thanks for support. Yeah, usually, usually those that call me Felix is those that know me in person. Ah. Either it's my, the, uh, ex ex classmate or, or ex army friend or ex the poker ma magic uh friend uh. also wheat prices will go up yeah f uh, our type bond is going up uh ten percent uh next year for sure so let me cover the second part of my sharing which is the Chinese big tech what is the outlook ahead can Alibaba and Tencent beat earnings or not so that's the big question so Alibaba Tencent right uh they are recently they had a rally remember like in May. Alibaba rallied uh, to almost hundred dollar. Then, 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 in the past few months, then people start to take profit. Then, uh, come back down again already. Also, but in fact, right, although now it's being sold down, it's sold down on the news is that the export import data is weak. There's fear that the property segment will explode again. Uh, because we all thought that the property segment stabilized already. Then now it's some cracks. Ah, uh, will, will the crack lead to it? Lead to an earthquake, I do not know. Uh. I hope they can fix the crack quickly. La. The, the officials, they must be decisive. Quickly stabilize and fix the, the crack and let the property market stabilize. That, that's the first priority they need to do. But the Chinese tech, 2022 results very bad. But now 2023, they are set to report their strongest growth rate in over a year. So this is the analyst estimate. Alibaba is going to report 8.5% revenue growth. My own estimate is, I keep telling you all, is I expect 8 to 10%. So end up, uh, actually, my estimate is a bit more bullish uh, than the analyst. So my one, uh, I, I say 8 to 10% is not I copy paste for anywhere one. Uh, it's based on, I keep, every day I share with you all, I look at the data. I use my own experience, like 15 years in the market. Then I, since uh, one and a half month ago, I tell you all, I expect 8 to 10% uh, revenue growth for Alibaba already. But end up. Uh, usually, right, whenever I give you all my own personal estimate, usually my estimate is a bit more optimistic than what the analyst is. Because I'm a Baba Boo, I'm, I'm a China Boo. Then uh, analysts, they are still a bit pessimistic la, on, on, on the China market. Half, half of them 
or a a bullish half of them they are bearish uh, uh. like JP Morgan say uh Alibaba uninvestable uh last year and the year before then they turn become bullish then now they turn bearish again they keep uh, flipping the prata so I also don't know can trust those analyst estimates or not but as a whole average uh, they expect 8.5 percent so I don't think it's difficult uh, to beat this estimate I think it won't be difficult for Alibaba to show a 10% revenue growth. Imagine Alibaba tomorrow night. So tomorrow night, I'll, I'll stream at 8 p.m. or 8.30 p.m. Depending on what time Alibaba announced their result. I will put my stream at 8, 8 o'clock as a default. Level. So Alibaba released their results at 7 p.m. Singapore time, Hong Kong time, or 7.30 p.m. I will quickly do up my slides then I share with you all at 8 p.m. But if I don't have enough time, then I might delay it until 8.30 p.m. Yeah, so I won't be surprised if tomorrow night Alibaba print a 10% revenue growth and rocket from there. I'm very uh, optimistic. I remember. So last year was very disappointing. Last year, the full year growth was just 1.8%, very fetish. And last year, Tencent was negative 1% growth. So uh, both of them, right, their growth was very negative due to the drag down in advertising. During economic slowdown, during lockdown, the uh, a lot of small businesses, they don't want to invest money to upgrade, like digitalize their business, go into cloud. They don't want to advertise because they don't want to expand their business. They want to just be in the survival mode. They wait for the opening, then they want to expand. So once we had this reopening, right, companies, they are uh, starting to advertise. Like the EEV companies, they uh, still advertise uh, very aggressively. Then uh, for the one that will disappoint is actually uh, JD. JD, the revenue growth last year was pretty good, uh, 10%. But this year is only 4.7%. So, so uh, that's very disappointing. But why? Why the JD numbers uh, will, will be so bad? Because it's a fundamental shift. Because uh, like Alibaba, they, they are also doing e-commerce. But the difference is that they push very strongly for the Taobao live stream. Since one year ago, they already decided to invest heavily to groom 300,000 influencers to promote the live streaming business. So now this year, they are riding on it, like social media, live streaming as a new way to, to sell to consumers. So the LVMH, Nike, Apple, they all open their official channel on the Tianmao and they do live stream to sell your products. Yes, you can buy iPhone and LV bag on the live stream on the, uh, on the uh, Tianmao. So, there, there is a shift in the consumer spending already. Just like now, now you are getting the market update from me is through live stream. So live stream is the future already. If like, let's say you you gonna start a business, you want to let's say talk about stock market or you want to sell any product, you are still writing a blog ah, uh, using a website to sell ah, uh, using a website to write article ah. Uh, you are gone case already. You are a dinosaur already because lesser and lesser people will read articles. Lesser and lesser people have the time to. Let's go to your website slowly, slowly, read, 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 go on already. Everybody, they'll just go to social media platform like YouTube or Facebook. They watch a live stream or they watch a short video and that's how they consume information. And that's how they they get to know your products also. So JD, the sales are, this year is very bad because they lack the social media element. And then the Douyin, uh, Douyin uh, which is a TikTok, uh, steal their market share because TikTok is going very fast, Douyin is going fast, and they attack everyone. So they, uh, they attack e-commerce, they attack social media, they attack entertainment, uh, they also attack the Meituan, the food delivery or location-based uh, services. All areas, uh, they also attack. So it is into their market share, and the one that's losing the most is actually uh, JD. So JD used to be number two, now it's becoming number three. Alibaba is number one, Pinktoto is number two. JD is number three, uh, based on the GMV la. and uh, Douyin is number four. So don't be surprised, Douyin can become number three and JD will fall to number four. That that's my 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 prediction now. So uh, the others like Ping Toto and Meituan, thirty over percent revenue growth is very solid. Because but these two is more like high growth, uh, high risk high return la. They are basically for them right. They they are still in the growth stage la. Yeah, high risk high, but their balance sheet is not as strong. Whereas like Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu, JD, they have a lot of cash in their balance sheet. For like uh, Meituan, uh, they are actually in debt. There, there are certain gearing, uh, about like 20% gearing or what. Pinktoto, their cash is also not, not a lot. Yeah, so 
their balance sheet is less 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 strong but there's more like high risk high return oh. but i don't recommend buying ping toto mei tuan oh, unless you really understand if you want exposure then you have to be very diversified that means example like uh, 70 of your chinese tech portfolio is in the big names like alibaba tencent by two then 30 percent you put into ping toto mei tuan i feel it's okay don't all in ping toto all in mei tuan you don't do that but that's very risky but if you all in, then you split half into Alibaba, half into Tencent, I think that, that's solid. Because Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu, they have a track record. 10 years of revenue and earnings growth. Ping Toto, Meituan, they don't have the 10 year track record. In fact, they only turn profitable over the last one year only. Yeah, so uh, overall for the big tech, right? You, you, overall, you can see that Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu as a whole, their revenue growth is about, uh, let's say, 10%. So that's much higher than the u.s big tech companies that like we saw uh alphabet seven percent microsoft eight percent then uh M amazon meta ten percent eleven percent revenue growth apple negative revenue growth so u.s big tech right gone are the days that you see them like 15 20 percent revenue growth now u.s big tech is more like five to ten percent revenue growth for the u.s big tech whereas chinese big tech or oh, we are leaning towards maybe 10 to 12 percent revenue growth slightly slightly faster i would say because china gdp gonna grow at five percent whereas the us gdp probably at one one percent growth yeah so i still believe that retail is still okay retail is still like social media is still growing or oh, this despite manufacturing is bad property is bad uh what are we doing we are still watching more videos and we are consuming more short videos more live stream and people they still shop online e-commerce e the gmv that i shared with you all for second quarter gmv growth for, for retailers actually up 15 percent but 15 percent doesn't mean uh, you you make 15 percent more money because you're selling more items but you're selling at a lower price so that's the problem that's the problem yeah so for uh the big tech companies right or uh as we compare the blue color is the last year like, last year the growth rate. last year was very weak number so alibaba tencent by two this june quarter will be a, a super beat lah. so uh whereas uh like uh, meituan and ping uh, they are still maintaining their, their high growth lah. in fact i think meituan and ping there's a chance uh, their numbers might disappoint the problem is ping right they only uh, like i tell you all like i explain e-commerce there are actually three segments uh, that, that the low end segment is the uh, Taobao Te Jia, Ping Duo Duo. Then the mid end segment is actually uh, Alibaba, the uh, Taobao, and the Jingdong JD. Then the high end segment is the Tian Mao, or uh, which is the brand, branded goods. So Alibaba it covers all three segments. Then JD, in order to grow right, they attack the lower segment through the five billion dollar in subsidy. They do a price war to fight against Ping Duo Duo through their jingxi la we are so the ping toto right the power ping toto is that they are do although they are going very rapidly but they can only use a price strategy they only attack the low quality high volume market that's where they have a high growth so example they are they have a lot of connection with the farmers so they skip the distributors directly for, they get it from the farmers they sell it to the consumers like through community buying or like 100 people together you, you buy the carrot you buy the grapes you buy buy the buy the mangoes you get a very cheap price so direct from farmers to, to the consumer so all these are, are the low 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 end item also that's what ping Toto is strong strong at you can you can then big brands like apple lvmh they're not gonna sell on ping Toto platform uh, but people worry it's counterfeit so the problem with ping Toto, right is that they cannot uh, upsell they can only attack the lower end they are un un unable to enter penetrate to capture alibaba the the, the high higher value customers so that's what i like about alibaba so alibaba even if they lose market share is they lose the lower segment they are still very strong at the mid and the the higher end like the taobao and tianmao they, they are still do doing very well so i'm not afraid of that but then uh, on the flip side right basically jd and ping Toto, they fight each other lah, so they both lose out then Meituan, I don't like now uh, is because they are facing a lot of competition from Douyin, from uh, TikTok, which I, I will talk more later. Yeah. So for the ByteDance, right? So ByteDance is the parent company. Uh, they own the Douyin and, and the and the TikTok. So for their local services, 
or which they launched uh, a few years ago to fight against the Mei, Mei Tuan. The GMV has now grown to 100 billion yuan. And then they're uh, gonna target to grow to by the year end to grow to 200 over billion. So Douyin started its local service in 2018. Currently provides service covering local local eateries, drink, fun, and entertainment. So the, the it's like they use short form video or to engage the users. Then through the user, example, you watch this one minute clip. It's an advertisement of this movie. Let's say Barbie. Then you want to buy the ticket. You just one click. You can buy the ticket. Then you can watch the full movie at the cinema. And then the towing they earn a commission. You watch the mark mark bang ah means those people. Influencer they eating a lot of food. They eat the red baby lobster. Wow, very delicious. Then you one click, you can. Then they will search nearby whether nearby got sell the red baby lobster. Got then they they deliver to you in twenty minutes. So the synergy is very strong. Imagine you watch a video like you see like master me. Wow, I eat the hot pot. Wow, oh, very nice. Or I eat I eat the ramen. Very nice. Then one click you can order it. Then twenty minutes is sent to you already. So the synergy is very strong. And towing is now starting to eat into the. Meituan market share. So I think this is a big threat to Meituan. Because in the past, uh, let's say two years ago, Meituan was like, I think 70% market share for location based services. Then 30% is the other main. And now Douyin is coming in and still stealing both their market share. But other main is just a very small part of Alibaba business. So I'm not too worried. Whereas Meituan is the one that is most under attack by the Douyin. Also, uh, the late post reported that Douyin's lo uh, local service business did not meet internal expectation in the first quarter, but see a spur in orders in April as people prepare for the May holiday, which is a Labor Day holiday. And then uh, lay orders fell again in May before returning to growth in July. So that's good. That means uh, second half we are we are back to growth. So like the consumers, right? Uh, they they are they are still spending. Uh, example like food and, and traveling. So that, that part like I shared with you all, the restaurant numbers, the retail numbers, it, there is still positive growth. Yeah, so you have to be very careful uh, on which segment you invest in. So yes, um, Meituan, Alibaba, JD, all these, they will show growth, but they will grow at a different rate depending on how they adapt uh, to the competition. So Douyin, the domestic sister app for short form video has achieved steady growth in its location-based service, but it's still way off to challenge Meituan's dominant market position. So Meituan now probably the market share is about sixty five percent. Then um, Douyin maybe already captured five percent already. So they have hundred billion in GMV, uh, in terms of Chinese yuan, for the first half, and their full year, their target is two nine oh ah. Wow, that's very ambitious. I don't think they'll hit the target ah. Maybe two five oh or what. But the thing is, the ByteDance is a private company. So we don't get to see their numbers. Hopefully next year they will IPO. I'm really very interested uh, to, to look at their numbers and maybe to invest in bike dance if it's uh, fairly priced. So the thing with the Meituan and Toyin right is that they have uh, they have a different strategy. Uh. Meituan is very traditional like a super app. So Meituan is basically they copy the uh, Uber then uh, now the Grab copy Meituan. So it's the same. Uh, like we, we as a lot of my viewers, you are from Asia, or uh, and some of you are from US and Europe. So you just look at your Uber app. You can uh do the right healing or can use the Uber Eats. You can order food in Singapore. You use the Grab. You can do uh right healing or you can use the Grab food. So it's the same thing. Or uh, uh Meituan, you, uh it started off more towards the food, the food part lah for food deal, and now you can use it uh to uh do the right healing also, but. They also have a lot of services like you can book uh, gym la, book hotel la, book air ticket la, uh, do online shopping la. Then they have the Insta shop. So you, you pay a higher fee, but let's say you suddenly your throat very dry, you want a bottle of honey from the supermarket and as you're not feeling well or you need some medicine, you just use the Meituan Insta shop. Then 20 minutes is delivered uh, to your house because they have millions of all these uh, delivery uh, riders. Yeah, so so that's the the Meituan model. So it's location based service. So it, wh where you are matters. Whereas Alibaba, Taobao, Tmall is like in your location doesn't matter. If if you are Singapore, you are Singapore, you can buy from Taobao also. Like if you are in any part of China, you buy from Taobao, they will ship it to you. Or it do, doesn't care about your geo location. 
Whereas Meituan is location based service because your location matters that like, uh, how near you are to the restaurant, can the food, can the product be delivered to you, can the uh, driver come and pick you up. So it's location based. Even you book the hotel, book the air ticket, book the gym, where you are going. Also that's called location based uh, service. And look at what uh, Meituan lacks is that it doesn't have the social element. Like now we are very focused you know, on the live streaming, short form video. And Meituan actually, they start to go into the short form video. They throw a lot of discounts off for short form video and live streaming. Like you go in, you watch it, the video, they give you maybe like a 20% discount coupon or what. But the problem is that uh, the, they get a lot of new users, but the users, they don't stay around because they lack the content. They don't have a huge library of content and their short form video and live streaming algorithm is not matured. It's not smart enough. Whereas like uh, Taobao live stream, uh, Douyin live stream, right, and the Douyin short form video, right, they've been around for a long time. Their algorithm makes the user very addicted and will stick to the app. Or like, like the average uh, Chinese uh, consumer that use the Douyin app, if they use it, they will use it every day and they'll spend like two to three hours every day on the Douyin app. That's why Douyin has a lot of opportunity. The more videos they watch, the more videos they have to, to sell them, uh, to do e-commerce or to sell them products or to sell them food. Yeah, so over the long run, uh, this is a disadvantage for Meituan. And that's why I'm, I'm less optimistic on Meituan because they are facing a very huge uh, co competitive threat from the Douyin. So what is the part where I like Alibaba and Tencent the most is the payment. Uh, so two things are uh, two areas right that ByteDance uh, cannot attack into. One is logistics, two is uh the payment. Or uh, I talk about logistics. Logistics is very easy to understand. Uh, so other business like Meituan, I'm not gonna invest in Meituan is because uh they they are under the attack by Douyin and they cannot defend so well. I prefer Alibaba and Tencent because they can defend better. Or uh, even JD can defend better because. Uh, JD has their own logistic network. So the three big players is the Cai Niao, JD Logistics, and the Sun Fong. For them, right, under them, the group of companies, businesses, they have the entire coverage for the entire China or to cover, to deliver to the 1.4 billion users. So already three different groups uh, have the full country coverage. Does it make sense for ByteDance to spend four or even five years to build a new logistic, the fourth logistic network to cover the entire country. It's a bit stupid, right? So they don't do their own logistics. So for ByteDance, right, they outsource their logistics to Cai Niao, to Sun Fong, and to JD. And nowadays, you see the Cai Niao and JD logistics, right? In the past, about 80% of their logistic business is through their own e-commerce platform. But nowadays, it's just like 30 to 50% is their own e-commerce. Then 50 to 70 percent, they do the logistic delivery for all the other players. So, be it Douyin, Pinduoduo, Pinduoduo also don't have their own logistic. They also use these, these three three companies. So, that's why you see Alibaba, JD, the revenue growth 10 percent, but their logistic growth is 30 percent because everyone have to use the Cai Niao, Sun Fong, and JD logistics. So, logistics is a competitive advantage because. Nobody want to build a fourth logistic network and it takes too many years already. Cannot be overnight. I give you, even I give you one trillion dollar, can you build a logistic network to cover the whole China in one year? The answer is not. It's not possible. It's because you need so much construction and construction takes time. You, the faster you can do it is four or five years. All right. So uh, ByteDance is not going to do that. So logistics is a mode that ByteDance cannot attack into. The second mode is payment. That's why I like Tencent. Tencent, the WePay, not only is social media, it's also payment. Alipay, which is under the N group. Of course, payment uh, is a dual poly, just like Master and Visa. I would think of it, uh, US is Master and Visa because they, they are the age of credit card. In Singapore, we also use Master and Visa, but now we are heading towards a uh, digital payment. So we are copying the Tencent uh, 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 Alipay model. So like now, uh, I, I want you to start a new company. I give you $100 billion to attack Master and Visa. I want people to sign up to your new card. That is a, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, 
First, you must get all the banks to issue new credit card that's under your new uh, system and all the electronic payment system, the POS, a uh, point of sales machine, have to change eh, so that it can it can read your 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 new the, uh, your new card. So it's very difficult to penetrate once you are dual poly. Same thing, like the Alipay and WeChat in the whole China, you go to all the shop. They only accept three payment: Alipay, Tencent Pay, and Union Pay. Union Pay is state owned one now. basically it's government one. But uh, Union Pay, the market share is very small. Most people still use the WePay, Alipay. So overnight, let's say you are bike dance, you use the bike bike pay, Douyin Pay. You need to get all the merchants huh, to to add add you. Why do you want to add you? I am doing fine, man. I have the, my QR code. People scan the Alipay and Tencent Pay can You want me to put another one? Nobody want to do that, so it's a dual dual poly. So logistics and payment they cannot enter, they cannot attack. Then one thing I am bullish about uh, is that, like example now, I'm I'm from Singapore lah. So so most of my viewers, half of my viewers are from Singapore. Another half of you are from overseas. So I share my Singapore experience. So as a Singaporean in the past, we go to China, we don't need visa. Or we can just go there, play for 15 or 30 days, then we just come back. No need, no need any document. But during the COVID lockdown, uh, they make the requirement that need visa to enter. Or they become more stringent. But in recent months, they already lift, they lift up already. So now China is encouraging foreigners to go in to travel. No need visa. Then you go to China now, you cannot use cash. No place accept cash. So you, you have to download your, your WeChat. Then you have to tie it to your credit card. In the past, uh, as a foreigner like me, right, I cannot tie my local, my card to the to the WeChat Pay. I have to create a Chinese bank. I have to go to the Chinese bank, open a bank account, put money, then I can link it to the WeChat Pay. But now, times have changed already. Now they allow like you can tie link your Singapore uh bank uh the credit card to the Alipay or the WePay, and you can spend money in China. So times have changed already. They they are really opening up. So China now the another way that they can grow is to tourism, get people uh, around the world to visit China. Because now they open up again, ma. But uh, I think this is they they won't want to like be too reckless. Like suddenly, while well, everyone flood in, so they open it gradually. But now Singapore is welcome to travel to China already. So I do have friends. Uh, like, like we saw what uh, the block X uh, recently shared, shared a loss a lot of us that he went down to China uh yeah so uh, if any of you are visiting China uh, for holiday or for business feel free to to give us your feedback and what's the on the ground experience uh. so so it will take time now uh. both China actually technically only reopened uh, the start of this year or, or the end of last year so a lot of things they are being very cautious like yeah, so the full reopening, the effect is not really felt yet. I, I would think it will take time now for us to feel the full effect in that sense. Yeah. Okay, so let me fire some rocket. Then I, I read through your comments, chat with you a while. Then before I call it a night. Oh, yo, I, 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 I skipped my chat. I forget I, my chat I wear already. Also, that's all my sharing for tonight. Uh, wish all my... Singaporean uh, viewers a happy National Day. So today is the Singapore fifty eight uh, birthday. Then just now I think at like eight fifteen or eight thirty. Don't know you all are here or not. There's some fireworks sound. So across the island, I think in the Marina Bay floating platform got the fireworks show. Then you can watch the fireworks show on YouTube. So it's back to social media. Everything is social media already. You want to watch the fireworks? Let's go to YouTube. Then maybe you can see the, the, the live we play. Huh? Okay. Uh, let me read through your comments. Okay. David Wong, I always buy ba Bamati rice. Wow, that one is nice. Eh? That one is make the, the what? Uh, Indian Barani will, will buy this kind of rice, right? The long the long rice, right? I go is the Thai rice. Ah. Thai fragrance rice. The Thai Molai, don't know what, the premium rice. Ah. That one, I, I like it. Ah. Yeah. In Singapore next year, GST confirm go up. Yeah, they say they won't de de delay. JB KSL Pasar Malam. Wow, protein shake also increase. Ah. Yeah, power of SGD. Now one SGD is what? Uh, 3.5 RM is it? A very long never go uh, Malaysia. Yep, CH, welcome, welcome. Yeah. 
lazy investor actually already feel inflation impact. $50 nowadays go supermarket buy so little. Yeah, yeah. Your $50 buy is uh, less and less. Uh. Soya bean price also go up. Everything also go up. SG family very rich. Yeah, yeah you see the Ding Tai Fung index. Ding Tai Fung Hai Di Lao. Still the, 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 the long queue. Uh. Yeah. Now prices for food. Uh, hawker prices more and more expensive. I eat the Cai Peng. Easily four four five dollar. Yeah, I think it will go up again. Anderson, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well in South Africa. A lot of Chinese companies investing in Africa uh, to to get the minerals to to boost the EV industry. So like the uh China quarrel with the US, the trade war tension, they banned the gallum and another one two minerals. If the trade war escalate, they might start to ban like nickel. Uh, lithium, uh, cobalt, all this, uh, then it will hurt the US EV industry. It will hurt companies like Tesla. So do, do, do be careful. Yeah. Nowadays, uh, uh, women behave more like men. Men behave more like Kunia. Yeah. Nowadays, women drive Ferrari. Because nowadays, women are educated. They, they have like masters and even PhD. And women, their income is very high. Like master, my income is so low. Uh, a lot of Singapore women that I've dated before, their income is higher than me. Yeah. Like, like last time when I was uh, just finished my poly, then I went to NS, I came out for my first job. I actually worked as a assistant software engineer for one year. Then my girlfriend I dated was a Singaporean girlfriend, two years older than me. She did sales. She was a uh, what a NUS uh, uh, graduate. She drive a car. Wow. So successful. Then uh, she will drive me back home, send me back home. Someone, it was the, the girl that sent the guy back home. What well, master, I don't have car, don't have driving license. Yeah, so my girlfriend sent me home. Oh, so, so yeah, so Singapore women, very successful. Same for China. China, there are women are, more, are, are starting to be more and more successful, more and more educated. So, nan nu ping it means a uh, guy and woman both are, uh, have equal rights equal social standing yeah you see that like, jewelry goods go up means the middle class still power yeah actually the one that is hurt in this store is actually the, the the lower class it feels that the middle class and upper class are still doing very well yeah david wong that's why you buy st order when you hit 52 you know why you still keep buying uh, your conviction very high so mr token must see their credit card debt will go up or not uh. china uh, china uh, they go buy the LVA is use cash buy one eh. <laughs> I don't know uh. but but US the credit card debt is is uh very very high. US the credit card debt is very scary. E E R R G uh, uh, Taiwan stock market better than China. Yeah, so the Asia a lot of market like Taiwan, Japan, Korea, India, Vietnam the stock market is better than China, because the fund managers right they they buy right they buy the entire Asia basket is ex China. They invest in Asia excluding China because China is uninvestable and that they worries that the US uh, government will have regulation to ban them from investing in China. So the US funds, they are reluctant to invest in China. So who is investing in China? Which fund is that? The Saudi Arabia, the Singapore GIC, all these that we invest in, uh, in, in, in uh, China to support. Yeah, so the Americans, they don't want to invest in China anymore already. Yeah. Can you refund my uh, subscription? Uh, regret already. Uh. Wow, why, why you want refund? Uh, Two dollar only. Uh. You want refund? Uh? Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Japan uh, train rides increase a lot. Currency depreciate. Also don't save much. Uh. Japan, uh, everything more and more expensive. Uh, because Japan, they keep uh, zero interest rate. But inflation is going up rapidly in Japan. The Japan Disneyland, the prices also keep going up. Now, now they say that go Japan holiday, not, not cheap anymore. Uh, ERG, thanks for your support. Don't regret, don't regret. Huh? Feel free to give feedback to Master. Um, so, David Wong, Master got put pistol on your head to force you buy blah, 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 or not. <laughs> no, no, never force you out. Yeah. Uh, but I think Baba long term can make money. Lah. You all don't, don't, don't paper hand. Don't have conviction. Alibaba is still a solid company. If you really want to paper hand, wait, wait for tomorrow night the results. Then you decide want to sell or not. Huh? Hold for one more day. Huh? Tomorrow night, then de decide if you want to paper hand and sell Alibaba or not. Palantir is short-term trading stock. Uh. Yeah, Palantir, I think it is more sentimental based. Uh, more for momentum trading, uh, I would say. 
Chinese people only buy if got big promo. Uh, you uh, Chinese is uh, they are more savvy la, uh, They got discount then they will whack. No discount they don't whack. U.S. is they 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 are used to the their lifestyle. Uh, they don't want to downgrade uh. Give them recession they also don't want to downgrade. They they still, they will just swipe a uh, credit card uh, to maintain their lifestyle. E.R.G.G. Don't quarrel uh, You all make peace uh, Make peace uh, Don't quarrel uh, Try to be more positive. I know everyone, uh, China market crash, everyone very upset, but there is still uh, some light at the end of the tunnel. We will get through this. Oh, endure, endure. So, uh, Nigoro, honestly speaking, I've been trading Baba. Buy 80, sell 100. Wow, hua, hua, uh. So, uh, Nigoro, are, are you going to bargain hunt? Are you going to buy again before the Alibaba results? Yeah, Shun Chai must be flexible, be value investor, and do some trading at the same time. Wow, so. Uh, so festival, uh, I think it's okay. Like, I number 80% of your portfolio, uh, buy and hold for long term, 20% for short term trading. Nothing wrong, also, uh, up to you all one, but you must separate uh, between long term portfolio and uh, trading portfolio. Uh, so, uh, bring down average cost, help me psychologically. Yeah, so a lot of people keep averaging down on Alibaba, but still stuck on the boat. So, hopefully, Tomorrow the results go good, the, the boat can leave port now. Then no need to buy anymore already. Jojo, welcome. Oh, welcome. Hello, ML and Baba Bird. All, all the Baba Bird uh, welcome you. Yeah, Hong Kong, the fees are very expensive. Hong Kong buy and hold for long term. I don't like trading on the Hong Kong market. I hope they, they lower the fees. America, wow, today working, uh, didn't notice. Uh, wow, National Day, you still must work. Uh. What, what is your occupation? Oh, so shag ah. I thought most people uh, holiday. Yeah, Singapore, SGX, the commission is even higher. Uh, SGX is di dinosaur company. Eh. Yeah. Suddenly, price jump. I still have 90% portfolio to let it run. Yeah, let the Baba slowly run. Ah. Don't, 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 don't think too much. Ah. Trading can earn money but can't change that. Yeah, trading, you, you in out, ah. you earn 10 20 percent you can't change your life. You will still want to buy great companies and hold for long term. Mang Wee Ling, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Okay, the trading part, uh, I, I skipped that. So, Disney will report results uh, tonight after market close. So, tomorrow, if I have time, I, I might talk a bit about Disney. Tomorrow night will be busy uh, for me. Uh. I need to cover the US CPI. I need to cover Alibaba. I need to cover the Disney results. Hopefully, everything will go smoothly. Uh. But I think the Disney results will be bad. Uh. Because they're still doing a lot of restructuring. So short term Disney will be bad. It might take one or two years for Disney to turn around. So it's more of a turnaround play. So don't buy Disney unless you are willing to hold at least two years. Lah. Lazy investor might keep buying when drop. So now my position is too big. Use spare cash though, then not so stressed. Yeah. I, I you're all into trading, ah. you're all like to gamble. Ah. Yeah, so I skip a bit of comments. 100 years of IP and brand is big mode. Yeah, the Disneyland, like now tourism boom, uh, you increase the prices, people st still go to the Disneyland one. Yeah. Peter Lynch tells us to buy a house before buy stocks. Yeah, a house is important. Even you stop, go bankrupt, you still have you, you still have the house, a roof under your head, then you won't feel so stressed. Ma. So like if you are in Singapore, uh, get married, get a HDB, it's your first priority. Excess cash, then you use to 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 uh buy the stocks, yeah. Wow, Amigoro is developer. Ah. Wow, so buy raw land. Ah. Wow, then you, you'll be like Mr. Lu. Ah. you buy buy property in JB for retirement. Ah. He gonna suffer a lot of his followers, but so he buy into the Austin Heights. A lot of people follow Mr. Lu, buy Austin Heights. Ah. They gonna regret it, I tell you. Because the thing is, you, you own the property already, right? But uh, your property, right, will surely lose value because the property is priced in RM. Uh, then the RM, let's say uh, 10 years later, one SGD becomes 5 RM. Wow. Then, although your, your property, let's say you bought at 2 million, 5 years later is 2 million, but because of the Forex exchange, you lose 40%. Also, it's, uh, I don't think it's a good deal. Lah. But, but, like what Mr. Lu say, uh, which is his right, uh, if you invest in JB property, you must treat it as a write-off law. You, you really is buy for retirement one, cannot see it as an investment. 
But the thing is, a lot of people follow blindly. They all go and whack the JB property. Then the JB property go, go out in price, become a bubble. Trading is mid 9988. Alibaba would be growing also if they were giving away free goods like Ping Toto. Yeah, burn money to capture market share. Because Alibaba, what I like most about Alibaba is the 25 billion of cash that they generate every year. It's a super cash cow. So they, they are very uh, logical. Whereas companies like SE and Ping Toto, high growth, lah, but the early stage is the burn money to capture market share. So it's a different uh, strategy in that sense. Bishan, B, forum BTO selling 7800k. Wow. Nowadays, I think the property is only higher and higher and higher. Yeah. I, I worry for the next generation. Lah. How are they going to afford the, the property? Lah? I, I, in future HDB flat in Singapore is gonna be million dollar onwards already. Yeah, empty pounds. Ah, Nico, your bird is so red lah. Yeah, he's, he become uh the uh, red bird already. Rainbow, rainbow bird already. If you are Baba bird for six months or longer, you, you get the final form. The final form is the rainbow bird. Yeah, rainbow bird means it's a senior Baba bird. You all is the bronze, silver, and gold bird. Yeah. A lot of you all is the is the uh bronze bronze bird and silver bird yeah. Mister Lu is very rich. Should buy SG landed for fun yeah. Like the Adam Cool Adam Cool is stay the SG landed one. But if I I were them I want to be like Chicken Genius. But Chicken Genius is like single ma. He don't have wife don't have kid then he travel around the world. Don't own any property just travel around the world. That that's that's what I want to do actually. So if, if in future I'm 50 year old and single, then I, I might just collect rental. I rent out my entire HDB, then I go to Thailand. I, I go and de myself and, 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 and I finish my life there. Yeah. I'll spend, spend my remaining time in Thailand. If 50 year old, I, I'm lonely and single. Yeah. Thailand, then I travel across Asia. Though. It's very cheap. Man. I go like Thailand, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, Philippines, those be a traveler that's why I, I must be healthy if 50 year old i still can walk can travel then i'll travel across asia like a budget trip yeah become a, a traveler digital nomad digital nomad david wong living in pan chong malaysia area la pan chong good investment i don't know i don't even know where is pan chong yeah mr lu did mention he write off asia malaysia the property I think cannot invest one eh, because of the forex issue la. It's more for buy and stay la. SG you can't find undervalued. Most likely you buy overvalued property. Po see, SG property all all is expensive. The only undervalued one you buy is BTO you, you, you get married then you BTO you can get cheap law. Jason eighty five welcome welcome yeah. SG foreigner duty same sixty percent. That one is more against the 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 Chinese hot money. Do you all know that? If you are American, you're holding a U.S. passport. If you buy the U.S., uh, you have an American citizen, you come to Singapore, you buy property, no need to pay the ABSD. Because the uh, U.S. and the Singapore got a free trade agreement. We cannot tax them. A lot of people don't know this. Then a lot of those uh, uncle, auntie, they say, oh, uh, foreigners, uh, oh, pay the a ABSD. Uh, I, uh, but they don't know. Uh, actually, some foreigners they don't pay ABSD uh. they are Americans but Americans don't need to pay ABSD like the who uh, the Dyson uh, the Dyson CEO come and buy he never pay ABSD uh. I, I forget his nationality uh. German or what uh, or where I uh, forget he never pay ABSD and more they don't pay ABSD uh, in, in case you all don't know uh. so so a lot of people don't know this because most people are common folks uh. they don't buy condo they don't buy land but but if you you know actually Ang Mo they don't pay the ABSD due to the free trade agreement. The only one paying the ABSD is like the rich Indonesian, uh, the rich Malaysian or the rich uh, uh China people, they come in. But that to them right, to, to them even they pay the 30%, 60% ABSD, uh, they feel that it's still cheap, uh, it's still cheap. That's it. Because it, like you look at like Hong Kong uh, uh you, even factoring ABSD, uh, our property prices is still cheaper than Hong Kong. Because Hong Kong is so expensive. Yeah. So they rather buy in Singapore than buy than buy in Hong Kong. So they don't mind paying the ABSD. Yeah. If you are Singaporean and you're earning SGD, if you buy Malaysia property, you sure will make money. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah that, that that's the thinking first the of course the rm is no good the, the currency issue ah if Mr. Lu thought of buying his JB house as investment, he will write off because it's a mistake. Yeah, he buy to write off. He imagined that he write off. Uh, he don't see it as a uh, investment. Uh. RM one four dollar one cent to four RM. I think very soon. Uh, in a few years time. Uh. Um, I'm think Malaysia has political risk. Yeah, the, Malaysia a lot of uncertainty, a lot of corruption. The 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 Najib thing. Ah, uh, like like like. Uh, I I don't see him really gonna punish le. Then Najib in jail but still can use social media. Eh? Something is wrong, man. Yeah. I'm think I just visit a relative in Ipoh. Seven K uh square foot uh, or landed freehold property. I am seven hundred K ah wow so so cheap ah uh. wow I want to buy that. Eh? Ipoh is all the way at the north. Uh. Every day eat the Ipoh for fun and retire there. Uh MJ Tang. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Malaysians riot in foreign invested areas. Yeah, I think they, they will protest. Ma. Why all the foreigners can stay the condo so nice? Then why all the locals, their, their housing so expensive? So, so there will be riots, I think. Like countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, sometimes will have the riot one. What is unfair? Uh, it's uh, unequality, uh, how to pronounce it? Yeah, so cheap. Eh? 223k SGD can... Stay landed already, yeah. Uh. Or oh, MV la Master pay uh 375k for this uh HDB three room small small one and it's an old HDB. So expensive, uh. Are you? Singapore property really really more and more uh unaffordable. Yeah. Uh Ting Wong went to Guangzhou last two weeks. I would say the retail business very crowded. Italy place also very full what? Uh. Hey, Tang Wong, thanks for your sharing. So you see, Master never bluff you. Master tell you all, really, retail is doing well. Restaurants are doing well. So it's a K-shaped recovery. You have to invest in, in, the, in the right uh, business. Like I mentioned, you Hai Di Lao. Hai Di Lao, the profit up 1,000%. Revenues up, I think, 20%. So restaurants are doing well. Uh, tourism doing well. Uh, retail is also doing well. So just don't invest in manufacturing and property. Uh. Sure die, uh, yeah. But I don't know when it's gonna recover. You ask me, manufacturing and property is it the worst over? I I also don't know because I don't know what is the CCP doing. I don't know what the details of their policy to help uh, stabilize the property market. But I think the property market is more important than the manufacturing. What well, manufacturing is external factor because US and Europe slow down, so nothing much the government can do to help the low end manufacturing. They can only support the high manufacturing, like give the tax incentive la for selling EV car, or tax incentive for using green energy, put the solar panel la, wind energy, all those la. Then uh low end manufacturing, I don't think there's anything they can do but let the low end manufacturing fail. Yeah, so smart investors, right? They will invest in Vietnam and Africa. So Chinese smart investors, they actually go to Africa, they do partnership with the local and, and I think that's the way to make money. Uh. Low end manufacturing will all shift out of uh China. Yeah. America master OT you OT yeah we OT master no holiday one. Monday to Friday always have to stream. If US holiday I stream China market. If China holiday I stream US market. So I I permanently Monday to Friday one. Self employed no off one. Then we end go out with girlfriend or so but is that that's balanced enough for me la. If I weekend also work, uh, wow, I cannot take it. That's why weekend I, I don't stream anymore. I want the work-life balance. Yeah, lazy investor. I spent in China very short. But there are tourist attraction very crowded. Uh. Very crowded. So as you as a user, you don't like it. But me as an investor, I like it. it crowded means it's running at 100% capacity. Then <laughs> can make money. Anderson, happy Independence Day, Singapore. Thanks, thanks for support. Yeah. Master sweet talk skill must be very good. Why? Why you say this there? Uh? <laughs> Normal lor, just like how I talk to you all. Just that I, I, I got this the dimple. Don't know you all can see or not. I say this is, they say this is my killer weapon. Last time I work in the bank, I'm the Jing Pai anti Saso. So Jing Pai anti Saso in English is called the gold medal anti killer. So usually anti like, like me a lot. Yeah. Anti see my smile, right? Then they, they will chat with me. Then they will open account with me and they will trust me. I ask them to buy the 
Singtel, Genting or Singsong or DBS Bank, they will listen to me. Man. Don't know why. Leh. Yeah, so I, I'm the Jing Pai Anti Sasso. Not I call myself one, it's people call me one last time. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Yeah. I'm thinking tomorrow 998 rise or drop, you will trade. La. Trade, you go in or you go out. Don't go out there. Right, right, Alibaba, right to 150 or 200 there. Don't panic, sell it, please, please, please. Yeah. Mum Mangkok, when will your girlfriend move to your place? Next year, lor, next year. Because uh, now she's staying elsewhere. La. She is on the contract, la, so she cannot leave her, her place. La. So she will finish her contract, uh, her, her like the rental contract end of this year. Then she will go back her country for maybe one or two months. Then after that, hopefully she come uh, come back to Singapore again to work. Then if she, next year she come back to Singapore to work, then she will stay in my place. La. So probably next year, like uh February March, you you all will see her already. Yeah, then I don't know what to do. Eh. I don't know how I'm gonna stream if she's staying in this room. So maybe next year in the March, right? Or maybe like I stream halfway, then she come back from work. She because the toilet is over there. Uh, then she will go in the toilet and bathe. Then after come out with the with the tower, then she will walk past. Then you all can see her in the tower. Then she hang hang the tower over there. <laughs> <laughs> then I think like that I think my, my views will increase a lot. I think my views will increase a lot. Because my audience ninety percent is male, ten percent is is female. So I know your all is the tickle pay one, tickle pay, yeah. But I do have some uh I, I might I also don't know, I don't know. I also don't know what what to do. Uh. I also headache. Uh. But I know other place to stream uh, because if I stream at the living room it's very noisy. My my house is opposite the road. Sometimes got the motorbike, the sound. I can only stream in, in my master bedroom. So I next year I see how. Yeah. Uh, why you all so curious about my girlfriend? My girlfriend, I don't know what's her favorite food also. Just together a few months only. So so slowly see how. Slowly knowing each other. So uh, yesterday I mentioned that uh you all can see me and my girlfriend picture on my Facebook. Wow, suddenly I see my the Facebook the stories uh, which is a 24 hour picture of me and my girlfriend. Wow, 300 overview, 20 over like. Wow, you're all... Wow, I talk about Alibaba, nobody watch. Ah. I post me and my girlfriend, so many people go and see. Are you? Okay. Wow. Today, Sony announced revenue up 33%, not profit down 31%. Wow. Sony is strong for their electronics, their game, all this. I, I, I also don't know. Yeah. Have to go and look at the details. I never follow Japanese companies. Master, if Baba drop to seventy dollar level, will you double down? Uh, I know money already. I I want point five times leverage. If Baba drop to sixty dollar, I will be margin call again. But I don't think it's coming down. Uh. like you see the coming results, the anal the analyst guide for like the eight percent revenue growth. So I think I think should be all right uh. I think the worst is over already for Alibaba Tencent. They are going back to double digit growth. But the thing is, earnings growth will be stronger. Don't be surprised that. Like, like tomorrow, Alibaba, like 9% revenue growth, 18% earnings growth, 10% revenue growth, 20% earnings growth. Because they did a lot of restructuring, a lot of cost cutting. They lay off a lot of workers. So earnings easily can grow twice as fast as the revenue. Yeah, so Baba, I don't think the boat is coming back. If it come back, it probably $90 is the support already. In fact, tonight is going up already. Then tomorrow, announce result. Then in my rocket to uh, 120. GG to tax inheritance. Uh, next generation won't have uh, money to buy property. Uh, they will have money, nah, just that their, their, their bank loan they won't until die. Nah. Like, like 20, 25 year old, they BTO get the house, they pay for 40 years. Then at 65, they pay finish their, their flat, then they retire. So that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the very tragic thing. Yeah, Disney result sharing can postpone. Yeah, if I don't have enough time, then Friday, then I talk about Disney. But Thursday 8 p.m. live stream. Once I go live, immediately I talk about the Alibaba results already. After that, then I talk about the Disney and the CPI. First priority. Oh, Brit Dyson ah. Sir Dyson is British ah. British is the UK ah. So I think it's the same. UK and US, I think they have the free trade agreement with Singapore. This Angmoor, right? They don't pay a ABSD. I never bluff you. You all go and ask your the property agent. Angmoor no need to pay the ABSD. It's bluff people one. That's why the Singapore property prices is, is still going higher. But it is now the recent uh, quarter, the prices never go up already. La. But not because that 
uh, the Amor not buying because the Amor no money to buy because US and Europe economic slow down they don't have the money to come uh, Singapore to buy but the ones still buying Singapore property from overseas is still the Chinese uh. what the uh, Chinese they, they, they have so much cash the 60% ABSD is nothing to them uh, and in fact they buy is not like one condo unit they, they buy the whole block uh. there, there's this news this Chinese they buy he buy 20 unit he buy the whole block of the condo I don't know for what uh, maybe for his the employees to stay or for his the relatives to stay yeah master is like the fortune cat yeah Zhao Cai Mao I'm the Zhao Cai Mao yeah even uh, she don't come back for work can also get back to marry oh, is it for me I don't want to so fast marry usually I, I want to stay together one two years well, only when you live together then you know match or not because everyone the living habits are uh, different then you might have a lot of big argument Shun Chai, holy man, ah. Whoa, not not Pico, ah. you all say one, ah. you all say one. Ah. Yeah, what time uh, Baba result out? Yeah, usually it's about 7.30 Singapore, Hong Kong time. Usually I stream is the uh, 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 7 p.m. At uh, 7.30 p.m. Singapore, Hong Kong time. Then usually I stream is 8 p.m. Singapore, Hong Kong time. So for US timing, it's uh, opposite. Lah. Singapore uh, at night is the US morning. So US is... Uh, uh, 7 30 a.m 8 a.m like that for the alibaba uh, results yeah so uh fingers crossed hopefully alibaba results will be good tomorrow night i cannot promise master can only make a prediction so my prediction is 90 percent chance alibaba will beat results and rocket five percent that's my base case my base case is alibaba okay if i have to make a gamble and make a ten dollar bet Tomorrow, Alibaba revenue growth, 9%. 9% revenue growth, 18% earnings growth. Then, beat estimates and rocket 5%. That's my, my base case. So, we see master will soon or not. So, update you all tomorrow night live stream. So, take care everyone. Take care everyone. Okay, bye-bye.